welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another TBR video. I am so pumped for today's video. I can't believe we are in May already. I feel like March was the slowest month I've ever experienced in my entire life. And then April just came and went so quick. I don't even know what happened, but here we are. And of course I have a ton of books to talk about today. So let's go ahead and jump into them. So first and foremost, I'm going to be starting off with the Asian Readathon prompts, books, as well as the information that you guys will need in case you want to participate. This readathon is being hosted by Cindy by Read with Cindy. And I will of course leave her information in the description box below, along with the announcement video and the Google doc um, that she has created for this readathon. But without further ado, I'm gonna talk about the dates the prompts, and the books of my choosing. So this readathon is going to be hosted between the 1st of May through the 15th of May, and there's going to be a live show on the 16th at 7 p.m. EST on Allie's channel. She is the other host for this readathon. I'll of course leave her information in the description box below. Um, and that is just for the reading portion. For the group book, they will also be having a watch along portion of this, and that is between May 15th through May 29th, and they will be having a live show on the 30th, 7 p.m. EST on Allie's channel as well. So um, I'm going to go through the books, and of course you'll figure out what the group book is in just a second. So the first prompt is to read a book by an Asian author. Now all of the books that I'm going to be reading for the Asian Readathon are by Asian authors, so I'm going to skip over that prompt um, and just jump into the second one, which is to read a book featuring an Asian character or written by an Asian author that is similar to you. So I'm a woman, so I am reading a book that is written by a woman. That is my similarity. And both the character and the author are both Asian. And for that book, I'm going to be reading Reflection by Elizabeth Lim. Um, this is a book by Disney, part of their Twisted Tale series. And I'm very excited. If you don't know what the Twisted Tale series is about, they basically take the Disney stories and then twist them up by asking a question. And this one is, what if Mulan had to travel to the underworld? And it just sounds very exciting. I really wanted to read um, all of the books in this series, but I figured since I have this one physically, I might as well read this one first, see if I like it, and then I can continue on. But I'm very excited to be reading this. And the next prompt is to read a book featuring an Asian character or written by an Asian author that's different from you. And for that, I chose Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Um, I don't know what this book is about so much, but um, I've heard great things about this book and I'm really hoping that it is something that I like. It is a contemporary romance, I believe. So that is usually a, a genre that I really enjoy. However, this is different from me because the character is male as well as the author is male. And I believe they are both Korean. So they're, that is different from me in very many ways. And so I'm very excited to read this and I hope that I really, really enjoy it. The last prompt before we get to the group book is to read a book that was recommended by an Asian. And for that, I chose Love Boat Taipei. I'm going to be reading this on audiobook via script. I'm taking this recommendation from Chloe from Books with Chloe and I am very excited to be reading this. I have heard mixed reviews about this book. Some people love it, some people hate it, but um, I am excited to formulate my own opinion on that. I'm hoping that I enjoy it. It is, I believe, about a young Chinese American girl that goes to Taiwan and it's a coming of age story um, and about her experiences there. So I'm really hoping that that book is very, very good. And lastly is the group book, and that is Little Fires Everywhere. Now, I am very, very excited for this. I really wanted to pick this up last month, but I wanted to hold off for this readathon so that I could do it for the group book, as well as um, join in on the live shows and the watch along, which I am so excited for. Hulu show has been hyped and raved about, and I just, I cannot wait to watch it. Who doesn't love Reese Witherspoon and Carrie Washington? I just, I cannot wait for this, and I know that I'm going to enjoy it so much. This is another book that I don't know too much about, but I'm willing to go in kind of blind and just see how I feel about the book in itself. But as for that, that is all of the books that I will be reading for the Asian Readathon. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about the books that I am bringing over from April. I went on a hunt for a book that's supposed to be in the stack, but I couldn't find it. I found it. Holy moly. So these books were books that I unfortunately didn't have time to read in April. My reading month for April was just all over the place. Um, I had a lot of anxiety during this time, as well as I got Animal Crossing and have been playing that nonstop. So that plays a huge part into that as well. But um, these are books that I still have a lot of interest in reading. I just didn't get a chance to read them. I'm not gonna go over the synopsis for these books. Um, I talked about that in my last TBR. I'm just gonna run through these so that we can get on to the new portion of books. So I'm gonna start off with two Lee Bardugo books and that is Shadow and Bone and Ninth House. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to read either one of these. I want to read this first before I read Ninth House. That's the reason why I didn't get to either one. So yeah, I'm hoping that I can get to these this month and 
we will see. The next is Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. I really enjoyed the second book in the series and so I really want to continue on. Just didn't get a chance to do it last month and I'm hoping that the series ends off on a good note. Not necessarily a good note but I'm hoping that the ending of the series is something that I like. I've heard mixed reviews about the ending and I'm kind of scared going into it thinking that so let's hope that it is good. Then we have The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver. I was going to read this for my April Showers readathon, but I just, by the third day of reading hard-hitting books, I was over it. And so I didn't get a chance to read this, but I still am very intrigued and I hope that it is good. Since it's been out now, I've heard mixed reviews, so we will have to see. And of course, last but certainly not least, this is a book that I am so sad that I wasn't able to get to it. And that is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I... I just, I was reading another really big book this month and then I slowed down way too much and I just never got around to this and I'm very sad about it, but I am so, so freaking pumped and excited to read this and I know that it's going to be amazing. All right, I'm going to go over the books that I've picked personally for myself before we go into the TBR jars, which I'm very excited for this month. But um, yes, I have a couple of books that I just knew that I wanted to read before I pick from the jars. So this is the first book that I want to talk about is Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. I did read the first book in April and I'm very excited to continue my reread of the series. I was very honestly um, surprised that I enjoyed The Hunger Games as much as I did. As a reread I didn't think that I was gonna enjoy it as much but I did and I'm really enjoying the series so far and I want to continue as well as re I'm re-watching the movies as I read them so I'm very very excited to continue with this. Next is Betrayed by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. I read the first book in the series um, and I want to continue on with the series. This is a paranormal va vampire romance. Um, it's very very old YA. I think the first book was published in 2006. This one was published in 2007. So these are very old and it definitely shows. Um, it was kind of a tough book to read and get through the first one, but overall I still enjoyed it and I want to continue on with the series. So I'm hoping that it gets better. And then I want to continue my reread of the Twilight series. I'm on Eclipse now. I'm not going to talk about this book too much. We all know what this series is about, but I am really enjoying my reread. So I want to hopefully continue these and finish them by June. So that's my goal. And my last pick um, before we move on to the jars is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a book about two characters that have writer's block. They are both writing two very different genres and while they are on this summer vacation at these beach homes they decide to switch genres and there is a romance that ensues and I'm very excited to read this. So the last book actually that I forgot that I will be reading this month is the second book in the Harry Potter series, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I don't have it with me, so I can't, I can't tell you. Um, I have a order of a box set of books, Harry, the Harry Potter books coming in soon. So I will be reading the second book in the series and I'm very excited. I really enjoyed the first. Um, so that will also be read in May. Now we're going to be moving on to the TBR jars and I am very excited for this. So we have a new TBR jar that I am very excited for. This one, of course, is my regular TBR jar that just has all my unread books. Um, as well as my books on Kindle, audiobook, and script. And then this TBR jar that is brand new has a whole bunch of audiobooks that I found on Libby that um, are a bit out of my comfort zone. Books that I wouldn't necessarily choose um, for myself. Books that I think the synopsis sounds good, but it's not something that I would generally buy, spend money on. So I'm really hoping that this will help me grow my reading tastes, learn different things that I like in new genres. So I'm very excited for that. So for this month, I'm going to be picking four from this stack and two from here. So you will have to see. I'm going to, of course, start with this one first, and then we will do the other one at the end. Whoa! We have a one trying to escape there. All right, let's see. The first pick we have here. Oops, there's two of them. Let's see. Oh, Frostbite. Okay, so this is the second, third, fourth, I don't know, one of the books in the Vampire Academy series. And I have yet to read the first book. I actually have it here on my TBR card, which is, you can't see it, but it's it's right next to me. But um, I have yet to read this yet. So I'm actually excited that this is going back on my TBR. I was supposed to read it in April, didn't get around to it. Wasn't planning on adding it for this TBR, but the jar has spoken. And I'm actually gonna put this back in here at the end um because obviously I haven't read that book yet so I am excited I just didn't think that I was gonna read this this month so all right my next pick let's see what do we get 
Children of Virtue and Vengeance. Okay, so we'll be reading the first book in the series because I haven't picked that one up. We're getting a lot of sequels. Um, and this is a book that I just hauled previously in my April book haul, and I'm so excited for this book. It is another chunky book, but I will not be afraid. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> um, I don't know too much about this is about. I picked this up mostly because it has an African-American POV and I really want to read more books that focus on that. So I'm very excited to be adding this to the TBR and I'm really hoping that I enjoy it. All right, pick number three. Let's see, what did we get? Me Before You, okay. Um, this is a book that I have on my Kindle. Um, I read it already, so it would be a reread, but I don't remember if I read the ending. I'm not sure. I think I read half of it and then watched the movie. <laughs> um, it wasn't during my time when I was reading, so I was just like, eh, I'm over this. So I'm very excited to pick that back up. Um, I do remember enjoying it thoroughly when I read it the first time, so hopefully I will continue to enjoy it. All right, and the last pick from this jar, we are going to read. Let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, okay. This was not a book that I was expecting to come out of here, but this is Orphan Island. It is a middle grade book. Ooh, sticker is coming off of this here. Um, it is a middle grade book that I picked up at Costco a while back, and this has to do with an island of young kids, and every, I think it was every year, Yes. Every year um, a boat comes and brings a new child and takes the eldest child and this book is set in the point of view of the eldest child that's going to be taken next um, and so she is sad because she is having to come to terms with the fact that she's leaving the only home that she's ever no ever known but she's also getting this new young child to understand what this island's all about and how, why she loves it and why it's her home. So it's a coming of age story and it sounds really interesting, but the last middle grade book that I read, I didn't enjoy as much. So I'm hoping that this turns the tides around and I really enjoy this book. All right, we are moving on to the very fun TBR jar. I'm going to be um, reading the synopsis for you guys off of Goodreads because I don't remember what any of these are about. So I'm hoping that we get some good ones, we'll see. Okay, Turtles Under Ice. I don't remember what that is about. I have an inkling, but I don't know for sure. So let me go ahead and look it up and I'll read you guys the synopsis. Okay, so this book has a 3.62 average Goodreads rating. And it says, a teen navigates questions of grief, identity, and guilt in the wake of her sister's mysterious disappearance. In this, bre break, in this breathtaking novel, in verse, from the author of 500 words or less, perfect for fans of Elizabeth Acevedo, Rowena feels like her family is afraid string of lights that someone needs to fix with electrical tape. After her mother died a few years ago, and her, she and her sister, Ariana, drifted into their own corners of the world, each figuring out in their own separate ways how to exist in a world in which their mother is no longer alive. But when Ariana disappears under the cover of night in the middle of a snowstorm, leaving no tracks or traces, when Ro wakes up to a world of snow in her sister's empty bedroom, she is left to piece together the mystery, the mystery behind where Ariana went and why, realizing along the way that she might be part of the reason why Ariana is gone. Turtles Under Ice examines two sisters frozen by grief as they search for a way to unthaw. It sounds like a very, very good book, and it's written in verse, so I don't think that it should take me too long to read, but it definitely sounds very good, and I'm very intrigued by that. All right, and the last book that we are going to be putting on this TBR is Elevation. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is by Stephen King. Um, this is not a book that I wanted to come out of there right away, but I almost dropped my phone. You guys saw that in action. Wow. Um, this is not a book that I wanted to read right away, but the TBR jar has spoken. Um, don't remember what this is about. I just know it's Stephen King. I wanted to read some Stephen King because he is an author that everybody talks about, but I don't want to buy any of his books because I don't have a feeling that I'm going to like them as much as some people do. And I didn't want to read like a horror book by him because I'm not too much into that. So this was what we got. So it says, although Scott Harry, oh, I'm sorry. My phone's stuck. I'm just gonna read you the synopsis then. Although Scott Carey doesn't look any different, he's steadily beginning to lose weight. There are a couple of odd thing, other things too. His weight is the same in his clothes and out of them, no matter how heavy they are. Scott doesn't want to be poked and prodded. He mostly just wants someone else to know. And he trusts Dr. Bob Ellis, 
In the small town of Castle Rock, the setting of many of King's most iconic stories, Scott is engaging in a low grade but el uh, escal <laughs> <laughs> but escalating but escalating battle with the lesbians next door, whose dog regu regularly drops his business in Scott's lawn. One of the women is friendly, the other cold as ice. Both are trying to launch a new restaurant, but the people of Castle Rock want no part of a gay married couple, and the place is in trouble. When Scott's when Scott finally understands the prejudices they faced, including his own, he tries to help. Unlike the alliances, the annual, f f <laughs> the annual foot race and the mystery of Scott's affliction brings out the best in people who have indulged in the worst of themselves and others. That synopsis is a very confusing. I, I don't understand, <laughs> but I'm going to read it and hopefully it's good and hopefully I enjoy it. But that's it. That's the end of this TBR. We made it to the end. <laughs> That was a rough one, so I'm going to try to edit it to make it look like it wasn't as rough as it was, but whew, boy, was it crazy. So other than that, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and of course, leave any comments, questions, suggestions in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!